what happens if the UK government triggers Article 16 of the Northern Ireland Protocol and the EU responds by cancelling the UK's participation on the EU science programme? Short answer, not good. It would absolutely knock our science. Our participation on that programme would go to third country status, which means we'd only be eligible for about half the lines of funding. We would not be able to replicate the rest and we would not have leadership roles on multinational science programmes. The longer um, uh, description of what would happen is as follows. You may be aware that as part of the, the TCA, the, the UK-EU trade deal, um, we negotiated pretty much full access to the EU science programme. So we got to be an associated country with all the bells and whistles, access to pretty much every part and even a degree of policy voice, which was more than I personally was um, expecting. But that's, that's what we got. However, even though we've had that agreement, we have not yet started on that new science program, Horizon Europe, which started it um, at the beginning of this year, even though other countries are getting on with it, we haven't actually been allowed fully into the program yet. And this has caused quite a few people, well, quite a few universities and scientists and science policy people to get nervous. Why was it being held up? Is it because of Brexit issues? And then in October, um, round about October the 14th, actually, the um, uh, the research commissioner, um, uh, that's uh, Maria Gabriel, pretty much said, yes, the reason why the UK hasn't been fully um, granted go ahead yet is because there are cross-cutting negotiation issues relating to um, the, the withdrawal agreement, TCA, all the rest, i.e., what's going to happen with the Northern Ireland Protocol in Article 16, because the UK is threatening to invoke that, and God knows how they're going to do it. Are they going to be a reliable partner? So then um, there were more nerves starting to build up on the UK side. Uh, Lord Frost himself was saying every day that goes by, we're not being involved in this programme. Is it going to be financially worth our while? Bill Cash was saying the same thing. And in fact, was even put out in the press um, that we were threatening to leave the EU science programme. We would pull the plug on them and go off and do our own thing, which wouldn't be smart. But nevertheless, we'll go into why. But nevertheless, that was the threat that was made. So it was expected that this would all come to a head in mid-November because that's when we were expecting, uh, many of us who are observers of this, um, for David Frost to say, we are triggering Article 16, or we are backing down on the Article 16 stuff because we've come to an agreement with the EU over Northern Ireland. But that hasn't happened. So this limps on, and this looks like it will limp on until after Christmas. And David Frost is insisting that he has not yet um, backed down and uh, triggering Article 16 remains absolutely an option, and they're thinking about exactly how they would do it. But the threat is clearly there from the EU side. If you trigger Article 16, well, we now own the EU science programme. It used to be you and us together, but we now own it, and we can cut you out of part of it or all of it, or we can do as we please with it. So that's got all of UK science waiting sort of nervously on what's going to happen there. And you've even got um, uh, uh, news or rumours that David Frost and others are working on a counter um, science programme within the UK that we could employ, deploy, if we weren't to be um, part of uh, Horizon Europe. So that's where we are at the moment. But what would it actually mean if we did trigger Article 16, and then we were cut out of the EU science programme. Well, by being cut out, it would mean that we were no longer an associate um, uh, member of the EU science programme. It means that there would be parts of it that would be ineligible for. Um, so, 
for example, the European Research Council grants, which um, give big sums of money to individuals and their teams to do blue skies research, very prestigious grant, we wouldn't have access to that. Similarly, for mobility grants like the Mary Curry grants, Mary Skwodowska Curry grants, to be precise, and a few others, um, we wouldn't be allowed to be the coordinators of multinational um, research projects, but we would be allowed to buy in from outside as a sort of second level player. Um, that's the third country rules. Now, I did some analysis back in 2018 based on all the funding that had gone from the EU to the UK on the Horizon 2020 science program. And that was to assess the effect of no deal Brexit on the UK, which is exactly the same circumstances now when you go from being a full member to being a completely outside party. And I found there, and it was reported in BBC and elsewhere, that about 45% of the monies that we've been getting from the EU science programme are actually in those lines that we would no longer have access to. So that would immediately cut our participation, um, in just purely monetarily, by 50%. But then also on top of that, it would mean that we wouldn't be allowed to be uh, the, the leader, the, the chief controller coordinator of some of these multinational grants. Now, I don't know um, how much Frost and others have factored into their calculations that we would still, as a third country, be able to buy in to the science program on a case by case basis with different projects playing second fiddle. Um, and that you should realistically allocate about half of your budget and put it on the side for those labs and those scientists that want to participate in the EU science program. If they haven't done that, and I could believe that they haven't, um, then that would be really, really stupid because you would want a pot of funding in order to be able to facilitate your scientists and your institutions to engage in multinational collaborations with their long-standing partners. If you say no to that, and if you refuse to fund that, you will see people leave and go and set up another labs on the continent uh, or any other uh, associated uh, member state pretty damn quickly, because a lot of people have long-standing heritage on some of these chains of multinational collaborations going forward. So they would want to do that. And for any new program they would make, it would have to be filling in those ERC and Mary Sklodowska grants. And those grants are all about attracting international talent. So they'd have to have a pot of money to basically fund Brits, but also fund people from elsewhere around the world, if you even wanted to get close uh, to being like that. But then you would kiss goodbye uh, to the ability for the UK to engage in science collaborations where the UK is the coordinator, because you couldn't do that on the EU one. So if you were to try and make a pot for the UK to run its own multinational program where the UK labs can or, or would be leaders of those programs, then basically you've got a pot of money whereby in order to get the other countries involved, you'll have to pay for their labs and you'll have to pay for their scientists. Um, or if you refuse that and say you want those other countries to chip in, like the EU science programme where everyone puts in the same pot, then you have to convince them why they should chip in to a UK science programme if they don't get a policy voice, et cetera, et cetera. And why would they sign up to that when they're already putting their money into one that already exists, which is the EU one. So this notion that um, David Frost is, is, is cooking up um, a replacement uh, programme or fund for, for Horizon Europe sounds bizarre. I mean, that sounds like the worst thing that you could possibly do, have an angry lobotomized potato who has issues with the EU and no experience in science policy trying to define and design a, a UK science programme. It sounds disastrous, but given this government, I can quite believe uh, that someone like that would have a, a hand shaping it. But that's, but that's where we are now. So as you can see, 
um, it would be very asymmetric in terms of where the damage is done. If the UK say that they're going to storm out of this, or if the EU boot us out, then essentially the situation is the same. The EU 27 countries still all get completely free reign and free access and full access to a science programme which is funded to tens of billions of euros and has um, well over 30, th pushing 40 fully associated members in it. And then also has bolt on from, from most of the countries around the world in third country status. And you would only lose from that the UK, which is prestigious, but you probably get to pull them in a second fiddle on your projects anyway, unless the government's really weird and decides to go kamikaze. However, from the UK angle, you would be stepping down from ownership of a programme and then giving that up to full members of a programme, but then giving that up too, to either spending half of that allocated money, still giving it to the programme, playing second fiddle on it in a very much humble pie eating way, or deciding to try and shut that down too, and essentially denying the vast majority of your science base the ability to play on multinational uh, research programs. So any way you cut it up, it is a really, really bad place for the UK to be in, uh, for UK science to be in. And that's why it's a massively strong leverage point for the EU in terms of these Article 16 in, in Northern Ireland protocol negotiations. Thank you.